CIG is kind of like Tesla. It's arguable this is a tech company disguised as a game company, at least up until now. Now they're getting more to the game part, but that's a different video. Star Citizen is a conglomerate of tech systems that have taken a long time, a lot of money, and some smart individuals to put together. Despite that, it runs awfully a lot of the time. The entire game, with millions of entities, is always running on just a single server. The most important goal has always been to change this, to split that one server into potentially dozens, to share the load across populated locations, and create an environment that can support hundreds in relatively close proximity. But from object container streaming to entity bind culling, a 64-bit environment to persistent entity streaming, this ultimate goal of Star Citizen to actually become a large-scale MMO is built on a stack of tech, culminating in what's known as server meshing. And it's all going into early testing amongst players right now. On screen now, we have a live environment of multiple servers meshed together on stage at CitizenCon 2024. While I wanted a demonstration like this at that event, with multiple people booting into the game to show this off, I didn't actually expect it. This was the first time that the public saw this concept actually working from CIG. Here is the same meshing process represented by an animation at CitizenCon 2021, showing the same thing. Today, using these in combination with my hopefully decent narration, I want to explain server meshing the tech meant to transform Star Citizen into an MMO of cities, fleets, and large-scale gameplay, as well as the lonely distant environments and abandoned corners of space. This is your guide on what is server meshing and when we might see it. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. I've hosted a few podcast episodes about server meshing, some of with folks you may recognize. In one episode with a member of the community, Panic Switch, I was introduced to the idea that server meshing was like the next generation of loading screens for games. A packaged set of services that was common in some applications, but more new to gaming. A concept that could help to create vast interconnected networks in games the likes of which Epic may be trying to make. This service, server meshing, has been attempted in a few different settings in gaming, and statically it is utilized to major success in well-known games. But dynamic server meshing, the true goal of Star Citizen, will allow for servers to scale across a star system as needed when players move around, condensing for areas of high population where hundreds of players may concentrate, and stretching to lower server costs in areas where very few players exist over a vast amount of space. And all of this will take place at extreme precision in a 64-bit environment displayed in first person across a number of different mediums. This monumental task is a major reason why Star Citizen has taken so long and a source of many costs, hires, and acquisitions. The tech the team is working with should definitely not be understated, but understanding how it works is actually not so difficult. Let's take a look at that recent demonstration of server meshing compared to the representative animation. So going back to that live demonstration, the demo begins by showing us the entities present, including their connections to each other and where they reside in the game. All of this is stored in the entity graph, the long-term storage of the game which is connected to us via persistent entity streaming. This happens in real time, as you can see on the screen now. Entities created, entities tracked. Pretty standard. With the server split into multiple zones or containers, as can be seen here in red, green, and purple, entities can transition between different containers in the game, and their state is replicated across the others so that every single container in the area is aware of what's happening to these objects. This means seamless transitions in between these game containers. Again, not the most complicated thing, but this is how millions of entities are handled, and it will continue to scale here in a moment. In the meantime, you can see here that certain parameters can be used to actually offload entities and containers from a player's visible game space as they move away. This means the only things that are actually loaded for a player at any given time are the things immediately around them, keeping that load much smaller than the overall game. But even then, you can only really allow for this so many times on a single server. And this is where server meshing comes in. With the technology we're about to review, the same space handling all those entities, containers, and players can actually be split into multiple servers so there is one server per container while still maintaining that single game shard structure that everybody would be playing on. This only works due to a complicated entity authority system, 
meaning each server needs to understand which server is in charge of the objects it's tracking. A vehicle, a player, a grenade, possibly even a bullet. If something happens to that object, that action and the state changes the object goes through needs to be communicated to every other server in real time, so that any player in any of those other servers can also see those changes in real time. It's a ridiculously complicated process that's meant to play out millions of times per second across star systems, planets, space stations, spaceships, and more, on various servers at the same time, while also facilitating all the gameplay the company is building. As you can imagine, dozens of servers connecting and working like this is going to get out of hand very quickly. We'll talk about the solution to that in a little bit. So as players are moving back and forth between servers, there's virtually no loading process visual as they transition. The communication of which server is deciding what happens is also an immediate transition, as can be seen from the color of the boxes around these objects transitioning back and forth as they move between servers. Due to the graph-like nature of the database, all the child entities like ammo magazines, health packs, and even a person inside of a vehicle are transitioned across servers as well when the parent entity moves between. But it doesn't stop there. Players can actually interact with objects on other servers too. While this complicates things, it does mean that fleet battles, endurance races, and even city blocks could potentially be split into multiple servers if need be to keep the game running better in that area than it is right now. This would help a lot during something like the Damar Rally which I covered last month, and you guys could see how my performance was. This is the real magic of this specific implementation of server meshing. Servers can also stream themselves in and out like we saw earlier with the containers, meaning if a server is handling some space that's completely unused, it would be able to take itself virtually offline. This ability for servers to shut down if needed or to grow and handle more space to account for other servers means hefty cost savings for CIG. It also could mean they want to move to dynamic server meshing which allows for this resizing, as opposed to the initial static server meshing we're seeing right now. But as I said before, the communication across all these different servers passing constant updates back and forth would get exponentially out of hand pretty quickly. This is where the replication layer comes in. A topic we discussed on the last video in this series, the replication layer is the one true timeline of all data in the game. It is the RAM to the Entity Graph's hard disk long storage drive. The replication layer tracks every change in any server and replicates that change to the central timeline of information so that any other server can simply reference that line of data, rather than needing to open a specific line of communication with the other servers. It basically puts the simulation that runs the whole game for us on a completely different set of independent servers from the data the game relies on. This separation is game-changing when it comes to the data flow and was the last remaining hurdle before server meshing became a possibility for the game. Keeping this flow of data from entities to the server, and then from the server to the replication layer, and then replicated out to all the other servers loading the game, is absolutely crucial to Star Citizen becoming the MMO it aims to be. It also allows for any number of servers to crash without wiping out the current position or progress of the player. Another server will just boot back up to take its place and reconnect to the replication layer like the game was there all along. If you didn't catch that, this could be the death of 30Ks on a mass scale. After seven plus years of various technological efforts slowly building up the tech stack that makes this possible, after needing to put off many other developments to wait for this moment, after constantly hearing that the main thing holding this game back is server meshing, it appears it may actually be happening. And here is what we know about when this may be in our own hands. While the replication separation is scheduled for 3.23 in April, there's no guarantee that's when it happens, but there are signs that all this tech is coming together and working, and working well. While initial tests of the replication layer crash recovery back in December started out taking five minutes to continue the game after a server crash, more recent tests show this time down to two minutes. As this progresses, it means any time there is a disconnection of a server, players won't be affected more than just sitting around for a couple seconds, ideally, if that. And the big topic, the actual server meshing, is working. 
Over the last couple of weeks, CIG has run a few closed tests with members of the community that hosted two completely separate servers meshed together and running separately on the same shard. Later tests have even included jump points, which functionally and seamlessly transported players between two different star systems for the very first time in Star Citizen's history. Marking a four-year stretch between the introduction of jump points in the engine and players actually experiencing them in some form themselves, however limited it may be. This is a monumental moment for Star Citizen. You can tell literally just by how much coverage it's getting. And it's arguably the most important technological development for the game so far. This isn't the ultimate goal of dynamically resizing and adjusting servers though. While things seem to be going relatively well and working towards static server meshing in the live build of Star Citizen, dynamic server meshing is not yet a guarantee. With what we've seen from CitizenCon, the monthly reports, and the slow progress over the last 18 months since persistent entity streaming proved possible, server meshing seems more likely this year than previous years in its most basic implementation. From the more multi-crew and multi-ship focused gameplay, to all the new locations, to even just the factions needed, we've slowly watched the game grow to this point when it now feels viable and reasonable for a new star system to be added. There is a very good chance you'll be playing a server meshed Star Citizen environment this summer, or shortly after, but there's also a chance you don't notice the much needed performance boost many expect. While multiple servers will be meshed together into one shard, as far as we know, only one server will handle either system, possibly leaving players without a game-changing update to their performance. That being said, we are in uncharted territory. Nobody on the internet, including myself, can predict what will be happening eight months from this video. CIG is likely to recalibrate after seeing how 4.0 performs on live servers. So while server meshing may finally actually be right around the corner for us, and Star Citizen is taking its biggest step forward possibly in its history this year, we'll just have to wait and see what this really means for Star Citizen in 2024. Thank you for watching this video. There's a lot more to say about server meshing and we'll likely host a couple deep dives on this topic on my live stream here on the channel, which you can find published to the second channel over on Space Tomato 2. And if you're looking for some gameplay content, I just started a channel specifically for it that I'll be posting more to in the coming months. Finally, if you'd like to support what we do here, you can sign up on Patreon or YouTube to become a member and get different benefits like live podcast access, exclusive videos, and your referral code in our referral code randomizer. Whatever you decide, thank you for watching, I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next.